Shimai. Today we're going to have a look at the, um, this tree here, the sycamore, or Asa pseudoplatinus, or in Welsh, Massanen. Um, it's a deciduous tree, so it'll lose its leaves now in the winter. We're in late September, so it won't be too far off. Um, that can grow really quite large. This one here is quite a big tree. Um, they can grow to about 38 metres tall or, or even bigger um, and grow to quite a considerable age. I mean, about 400 years old. Um, these have been growing in Britain um, for at least 500 years and, and some people think that they may have even been introduced by the Romans. Um, in Scotland they go by another name, they go by the name the Great Maple um, or also known as a plane tree. Um, Pseudoplatinus in the Latin part of the name means the false plane maple and Asa is a maple tree and we've already looked at Acer campestra which is the field maple. They're fairly deep rooted which means that they can withstand strong winds so they won't blow over in, and, and they grow in places where they can be tolerant of wind. The name sycamore derives from confusion with the Middle Eastern fig and the Middle Eastern fig, the Latin, is ficus sycamorus um, and that's down to it having similar leaves and that's where this name sycamore has actually come from. Sycamores can grow almost anywhere. They produce an abundance of seeds which we'll have a look at um, that are wind um, distributed so they, they will cover a large ground and they will propagate and um, they'll grow pretty much anywhere. I mean you'll even see them growing in people's guttering where they've blown and, and sort of spun into um, and it's for that reason they're actually considered to be a bit of a weed but as you'll see they're actually not a weed they've got lots and lots of uses. I always like to talk about the bark and so it's easy to identify. Now the bark is usually grey, brown and smooth at first and turns later um, into having like scales with reddish markings um, and it's sort of flaky and, and, and plated. Now it's very difficult to see but up there, you might not be able to see it, that, that's where it's starting to be flaky and plated. But it's just lovely to see how much lichen and moss is in here. It's amazing. The leaves can be very, very variable in size. Um, they can be sort of 10 to 20 centimetres long and just as wide. Um, these ones actually are relatively small compared to some of the sycamores that we have around here. Um, but you can see there. Um, now they have normally around about five oval pointed leaflets with toothed margins. So there's one, two, three, four, five. But as you could see on the one I first looked at, it only really looks like three. The two top ones are quite small, so they cannot not always be the easiest to identify, but aces generally have the same kind of patterned leaf. Um, and they're dark green above, as you can see there, light, lighter, paler green underneath. Um, and these will turn a beautiful gold and yellow in the autumn. Um, quite often it will have as you can see on this one here, something called a tar spot. Now, you can just see it by there. Um, and this is a type of fungus that causes blotches. And also, I don't think there's any I can find at the moment, they can have like little red spots, little red galls on the leaf as well. Sycamores flower in around about May time and the, the flowers can be around about 5 to 15 centimetres long and that's not a single flower, they, it's usually like a stalk covered in lots and lots of tiny little flowers that droop downwards. Um, the flowers are like a light greenish yellow colour and interestingly this sycamore that we're, we're looking at here in the spring when it's in flower, the, the sound of buzzing from it is absolutely amazing. There's so many pollinating insects that will come to this tree. Now once those flowers have been pollinated, they turn into the fruit and it's the fruit that we all know and we love. It's these fantastic winged helicopters that you can see under here. There we go, Let's see if we can pull them through. There they are, the winged helicopters. And they're about three to five centimeters long. And I'm gonna actually break these off because they are ripe. There they are. And 
When we looked at the um, field maple, the field maple helicopters are straight across. Now, sycamore are at this acute angle like that. So this is quite a good way of identifying between the two and the leaves are slightly, slightly smaller as well and on the, on the field maple. Um, these, interestingly, these little helicopters, although we all know them as helicopters, uh, their actual name is Samaras. And they come now and they're, they're ripe now, September, October sort of time. So this tree will be shed in these and they'll be blowing all over the place and falling like helicopters. The sycamore on the west coast of Scotland is also known as the dual tree or the grief tree and that's because that clan chiefs used to use it as a gibbet um, which was something that was used to hang their enemies from. As you can see on this sycamore there's lots of leaves it produces a very dense crown and when those leaves fall it now in in the autumn going into the winter it's a fantastic um, habitat for to boost earthworm populations we've already said that the the flowers in tra uh, attract lots and lots of insects um, and it's particularly uh, sort of affected by aphids um, but that's good because they're enjoy <laughs> in, within the food chain the aphids are on the on the tree and then they're enjoyed by birds and ladybirds and hoverflies um, so you can see as well as the pollination it attracts other insects and, and birds through the year and I know that these are particularly affected by squirrels now the squirrels within sycamores and quite often you'll see dead branches you can see the leaves turning brown in the top of sycamores and that's because squirrels will strip the bark away from a uh, from a sycamore tree to get it the, the the sap underneath is quite sweet but also they can peel it away in long strips and use the bark for um, building their drays their nests that they that they live in the leaves, as we've already seen, are affected by tar spot fungus, but also they're eaten by caterpillars and moths. The helicopter samaras, the, the seeds that come off the tree, um, are also eaten by birds and small mammals. And quite often we can watch the squirrels up in these trees um, clambering out onto the very tips of these branches to, to eat the helicopters, to eat the seeds. Sycamore has quite a few uses. The wood is, is a pale white and it makes an excellent firewood, but it also makes an excellent wood for carving and was often used in Wales, um, where we are now, for, for um, carving love spoons. Um, it's also um, used in kitchen utensils because it doesn't taint the food um, and it's been used for things like spoons and bowls and platters and rolling pins. Um, I also read once that it has like a natural um, antibacterial quality for it so it's good for things like the, the, the kitchen utensils and chopping boards and things. Sycamore wood can also be peeled very very thin and turned into veneers so it'll be used to coat not so nice woods or um, you know man-made woods with this lovely veneer to make um, to make it look nice. Sycamores are often planted in parks and in streets because it's a, a very tolerant tree of pollution so quite often when you're out and about in streets and parks and cities you will see sycamore. Similar to some of the other trees that we've looked at that are, haven't been in our country for that long, um, being an introduced species, there's not a huge amount of lore and history behind it. But this idea that it was used for utensils, it was also used for butter pats and things to do with milk and dairy products. And it's for that reason that sycamore was believed to keep fairies away and prevented um, milk from spoiling and going sour. So there we go, the sycamore. Um, it's not a weed. It's a fantastic tree that has become colonized throughout, um, throughout Britain. You'll see it all over the place. Yeah, it grows really well, it self seeds and it, it, it will grow pretty much anywhere, but it has so many uses and it's such a beautiful tree to see out in the countryside. Like we've already pointed out, loads of insects, birds, mammals enjoy it as a habitat, so it's got to be a good thing. Um, Keep an eye on not confusing it with some of the others that we've looked at, like the field maple. I th hopefully we, we can see the difference between it. Remember the helicopters, the field maple are straight. These ones are angled down. Um, and just go and find some. Pick those helicopters, now those Samaras this time of year, and spin them around. It's great fun. So go out, see if you can find it. Good luck.